Hi, I'm Suzanne Lynn, and welcome. Our guest today is Avinash Misra. We're just going to go with Avi because that's so much easier for me to pronounce. Um, Avi is the co-founder and CEO of Scan AI. Uh, it's an AI-powered process discovery platform. He's a serial entrepreneur. See, I always, I always like the the little cliffhanger there. Serial entrepreneur. He's got a significant experience in digital transformation and automation. I'm coming off with the glasses because my reading time is done. We are just going to talk and have a nice conversation about, first of all, who are you? My name is, as you said, Avinash. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Scan.ai. Mm -hmm. uh, what our company does is it solves this problem that has beset the world for a very long time, which is this that in the industry, whenever you want to find out about how people work, especially on digital systems, you know, what, what do they do? Uh, what systems they invoke? When do they invoke them? What do they do? The only thing at our disposal was that you would deploy business analysts, humans who would go out to these locations and talk to people, observe them at work, you know, make notes, a boxes and arrows diagram, and then come up and say, this is your business process. Mm -hmm. And this has caused a lot of blood, sweat, and tears in the whole digital transformation space where people are looking to transform, optimize, automate their business processes. Because what we discover as human beings is extremely biased, <laughs> both from the first point of, point of view of the person who's telling about the business process and from the point of view, uh, view of the person who's receiving it. Uh, you know, if the, a small anecdote, if you were to ask Avi, do you eat healthy? <laughs> of course I do. Right. Uh, that's my stated, that is my stated response. If you, were to, if you really wanted to find out if I ate healthy, you would observe my behavior. You mm -hmm. would, for example, look at my invoices and receipts from grocery stores and restaurants and look at what I ate, and then you would figure out what I So there is a whole gap between what we say and what we do kind of thing, or a gap between what economists call stated preferences and observed preferences. So this problem of discovering business processes today is because we have to ask. And people sometimes either don't want to tell, so they will always tell you what they are supposed to be doing, not what they actually do. And the second problem is you can't do it at scale. If you have a business process where 100, 200, 300 people, 1,000 people are involved in a piece of work and making decisions, how do you individually query each of them, right? So that's the problem we are trying to solve by creating a virtual and AI, an artificially intelligent business analyst who can observe at scale and figure out what the business process is. Make sense? It makes a lot of sense. And the first thing that comes to mind is, oh my goodness, before this, how much money have businesses and organizations, corporations thrown away targeting the wrong areas because they just didn't know better? Exactly, exactly. So what I this is what I call as the original sin of digital transformation. And uh, much of money has been spent not just on uh, you know optimization and transformation, but very recently more so on uh, activities of automation. What parts of human work can be automated, right? And if you don't know what they are doing, especially on the screen, right. then you 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 are uh, chasing the rabbit down the wrong hole kind of uh, kind of issue, right? So along those lines, Avi, what kind of corporation, what type of business should be asking? whether this is something that they need to look into to help kind of mainstream and, and cut out some of the fat of um, training that doesn't need to be done because they're focusing in the wrong area. So I think across a broad range of human digital interaction uh, and which industries have a broad range of human digital interaction. When I say broad range, I mean, people are sitting down and they have been told that there's a certain business process or certain rules or certain set of things that they want to use, right? And they've been given general tooling, right? An SAP system, an email system, PowerPoint, Word document, whatever, right? And they're using this tooling, right? And they're making mm -hmm. decisions on the fly based on the upstream business conditions, right? right. So wherever there is a largest set of people, you know, in excess of, let's say, 20, 30 people, right up to 5,000 people who are involved in doing uh, or executing a business process, Wherever there is complicated rules that people apply on the fly, mm -hmm. you'll find later difficult to recount what those business rules were. But if there were if the situations there in front of them, they would do it, right? It's much like yeah. you driving a car, right? If you were to drive a car, you don't you don't remember all the rules. But when the uh, uh, the autonomic nervous system kicks in, you know exactly what to do. Your body does it. Right? So there is a tacit knowledge involved in wherever there is tacit knowledge involved, where there's a diversity of tooling, where there's a large number of people. Uh, you can use the system to really discover what is true. And mm -hmm. based on what is true, then you can do either transformation, 
automation, or indeed even continuous monitoring. So a lot of times in a large population of workers, it is very difficult to say where is the element of risk. What is it that one person is doing that is deviating and creating a certain risk profile that adds up over time? Mm -hmm. right? And organizations have found, have been fined billions of dollars simply because today we do not we cannot put a supervisor on top of every person, right? right. So our ability to be able to watch on the screen what's going on, recognize what is going on without resorting to, hey, Mr. Organization, Miss Organization, give me the access to all your backend data and I'll do all the number crunching and tell you. This is a very simple way, much like you would bring a business analyst to watch over work. Here is a small piece of tooling that you put on the desktop in no different from this tooling that you're using to record this interview. Mm -hmm. And you can see me, the AI can watch screens of thousands of people and find out those particular nuances, hey, this should not have been done before this. Right. And so you can change the whole game in terms of your risk profile, in terms of how optimally your workforce is working, find opportunities for automation, and this is across the board. And I know it's a long answer, but I just want to touch on that point. It's across the board. Insurance companies, banks, manufacturing organizations, oil and gas, where there's a heightened um, uh, healthcare, where there's a no. heightened focus on process, and our ability to be able to watch every person as they run the process is limited. And can you bring in AI to understand their work, put in targeted interventions into their work, saying that, hey, this should not have been done this way, maybe this way, right? Or this is the right path of doing things. So it's like building a, an intelligent helper for all business processes. Of course, that helper has to first understand and recognize and learn what are the things that are going on, which itself is a big, big, big problem area for enterprises because they don't know, they know what their business process is supposed to be, not what it is. Oh, you said so much in there. I keep, I have so many things I want to follow up on. I'll start with this one though. I think about the telephone game where uh, management goes into a meeting, they come up with uh, answers of how things are going to be. They all then spread out to their team and they then give the information the way they perceive it. And then all of those people who are receiving it receive different information. This is really a way to cut through and give precise information. Maybe this group of people need training in this area. This group of people misunderstood this area. You are just, you're getting to the very best of what training needs to be through this. Indeed. I, in fact, I liken it to precision medicine versus broad spectrum antibiotics. Mm -hmm. So broad spectrum antibiotic works. I mean, the world goes around it, but it also does a lot of collateral damage, right? Oh, and yeah. there's a loss in, in areas where you don't need to put that antibiotic. So today there's a large group of people involved in a business process and you want to tweak and you want to change certain output parameters, right? You want to change throughput, customer service, whatever. And then you look at the process and you say, hmm, what can I do to do this? And I say, okay, let's, get, let's set up a, a two hour downtime and let's train everyone on the process because you don't know where the problem is. So you train everyone once again, as opposed to our methodology of observing work we can narrow down to exact person or a group of people and the exact part of the tooling, hey, in SAP, this particular screen is what is consuming maximum time. What is it that people are doing there? So we can, we can go ahead and then target the exact set of people, the part of the cohort and the part of the tooling that allows us to then hyper-target those areas of work or those pieces of actions of human beings where training needs to be given. Indeed, much of the work that we do has to do with precision, has to be, has to do with the equivalent of precision targeting, right? Mm -hmm. So whether you're looking to automate, so you say, okay, this part of the work is done by human beings, but we can augment them by putting this small piece of software in between. How do you find that area? Yes, if you had one person in one process, you could do that very easily. A thousand people, thousands of processes. How do you discover at scale? So you do that using scan, which does not require any backend inter integration just put the tooling in there it will look at the screen like a human being it will recognize the business processes right across all these people because seeing everything and then give you these opportunities of interventions they may be automation or training or re-engineering and optimization by telling you hey here's where the bottleneck is here's where people are spending a lot of time you want to optimize this path of work right so that's that's the whole beauty of replacing uh us just humans observing and making biased understanding of what the business process is likely to be, but bringing evidence to that expertise which humans already have about knowledge of the business process, right? So they already know what the business process is, but what right. we are doing is bringing evidence to that expertise. This is, this is unbelievable. This is really, this is cutting edge. 
of how to use artificial intelligence to really maximize. It makes me wonder, what would a business have to lose? What, what if you were to go in and just give a grade to how things are going? I mean, when you talk about exposing the truth, uh, maybe they're doing well, but shouldn't they get a grade? Indeed, indeed. And so there are even, let's take an example, right? So let's say we picked up a, we picked up a business process and we said that, all right, the, here are two business processes across two geographies that you run, same process across two geographies. And you could run the tooling for two weeks on one side and on the other side. And then you could look at the best practices or the throughput and the output of each of these sites and give a comparison saying that, hey, this process is 30% more efficient on this side. What are the differences, right? What are they using different paths? What are they using different tooling? Are they fundamentally faster at their work? Is there training required? All of these things can then be compared. Take automation, for example. You take up a process and you say, all right, here is what my people do. And typically what happens today is that system integrators will come and tell organizations that, hey, I will automate such and such process, right? But they do not have a view as to what parts of that process needs to be automated. And so they take a guess-based estimate saying that, hey, if I automated this particular part where a person is copying field A to field B and put a bot in its place so this work can be faster, but fundamentally, they can't answer the question because they don't have the answer to the fundamental question. How many times is this person doing this across two, a two week period? And how many people are doing this across the entire workforce? Right. So only when you have the data of what is exactly being done, then you can say, yes, my intervention of automation makes sense because 90 percent of the traffic is going through here. Or you might say, well, my intervention doesn't make sense because only 2% of the time we are actually doing this. So even if we were to put a bot, we'd, meet, we'd not be shifting the bottleneck too much. Right, right. Avi, you make a very good case for why organizations would want to do this. I mean, it is just, this is next level stuff that um, that's going to take the bias of human conflict and opinion out of it. Really, it's black and white. Whether right. you're running a process correctly is not, of an opinion. There's no gray area in that. Right. But I, I have to move into one of the quickest concerns I think people will have with this is privacy. Can you address that? Indeed. Uh, and yes, you're absolutely right. The moment we say to customers, uh, we get this GWOW reaction and say, you, you've got to be kidding. You're, surely you're not recording the videos, uh, you're not recording screen, and then you know taking away that. And we have put an exaggerated amount of um, uh, amount of uh, emphasis, of work, of tooling, and technology to protect uh, the data and the privacy and, and ensure privacy. Whose privacy are we protecting? Frankly, there are two two personas. Number one is the person who is working on the business process. Now, let's say Susie or Avi were working on a business process. It is possible that you know we do our work and then we happen to open our own Facebook page right. or our own. Our own. I'm sure that never happens at work. <laughs> I am sure, absolutely. You, you and I are not the kind. You know? No, we're not even on Facebook. Forget it. <laughs> uh, but, but let's take another example: our healthcare records, our banking information, and we might open that on screen. Now, sure. because the scan um, uh, scan system is watching the screen, it is possible that the person might feel that hey, my information is being taken away. So, the first person whose privacy we must protect is the worker themselves, right? And how do we do that? We actually have the ability to be able to say upfront as we set up these virtual process agents, which are watching the screen on these desktop to say, what forms part of the business process? An inclusion list, or we can say an exclusion list. What does not form part of the business process? Wow. Once that's defined, then we do not capture any information as soon as those applications are either on screen or off screen, mm -hmm. right? So that is one. So we do not capture at source. Now you might ask, well, that's very all very well and you've protected this person, but there's certain certain other pieces of information that are there on the business process screen itself. So let's say in a, in a banking environment, the screen might show the social security number of the person of whose loan you are sort of provisioning as a loan processing, you know, a mortgage processing person. Sure. So we also have the ability for the AI to learn, even be taught right upfront and learn over time, both of being able to mask and redact sensitive pieces of information as that data is being collected. So what goes up into the engines that churn and look at this, these uh, screens and make sense of what is going on, they have only access to the general picture and the shape of those applications. They do not have access to what is written inside those, uh, those screens, right? So that information is completely masked. So from both angles, we protect business data 
and we protect the privacy of the person involved in that business process or running that business process. So a large amount of uh, tooling. And Susie, I might say that uh, that there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of stress in this area. In fact, uh, we are very happy to say that even though this is one of the first questions that come up, uh, our customers have looked at our technology, uh, sort of pen tested it, and uh, run various uh, tests on it, and looked at how we are handling data. And we're happy to say that uh, large organizations, which include insurance companies, banks, and so on and so forth. Uh, are happy to use the system simply because of the effort that we've put in into ensuring uh, privacy. Absolutely. I'm sure if there had been many, many problems, we wouldn't be sitting here talking as, you know, an upgrowing company because it would, it would have been squashed. I mean, privacy is a, the probably biggest issue. Do you have a success story? Would you be able to share something with us about maybe a large organization that brought you in and thought maybe they were doing pretty well and had their eyes opened? I do, I do, in fact, every single one of them. And that's the whole ca the chasm that needs to be crossed. Every organization believes it understands its processes. Yeah. But the challenge is that, yes, it understands them as it set them out. But they do not know them as they are today. Mm -hmm. And they especially do not know them as they are on the ground where the clicks and the mouse and the movement and, and the various screens that are being filled out at the atomic level and how that atomic level builds upwards. So this is a true story. I mean, uh, our, our company, our, our customer in the insurance space um, was looking to you know, transform its operations. And uh, they had an agenda of saying that, hey, every three months we'll make certain interventions into our tooling. And then we will look at the, uh, the output in terms of uh, you know whether, whether customer customer service rates went up, uh, the NPS score went up, or the loan or the uh, adjudication time for authorization of claims uh, came down. All of these things, and try as they might, every three months they would make the change, and there was no change in the final uh, in the final you know outputs that they were set, or they were trying to do. So they, then they brought us in, and they brought us in only for one part of the business process, and we showed them that the changes that they were making were actually not happening because the change that they thought that they made, people were actually reverting to the way they were doing it earlier. And it was the same process running. But there was no way to tell because the changes were so granular that there was no way to capture later whether the person did those things or not. So this granularity and the atomic nature of information is what we capture saying that, hey, this person did invoke the application. Within this application, they did go through these screens, they did check this information, and this is the process that they followed as opposed to you made an intervention, but you don't know whether they did it or not. All you're seeing is the meta output, whether the loan was provisioned, uh, provisioned in what time it was provisioned, or whether the claim was adjudicated within that time. So most of the tooling today works on committed states of data. That is one start and one end. What happens in between is what is, what is the worker doing on the screen? What's the agent doing on the screen? That's what we are trying to bring visibility to. So this you know, was then saw that none of its changes were actually making it to what people needed to do, right? That's when they said, all right, we need to look at scan. Through scan, we need to look at work and make changes in what people are actually doing, not what they think they are doing. Right, right. I mean, yeah, there's a big difference. Uh, somebody might feel like, I'm sure, I'm doing the right thing. I And then as they walk away from the boss's office, I think, um, I don't know. I mean, I'm getting the same results, but that's not what they were told to do. And that's not what the new process is. Correct. It makes a difference. It's a big deal. Correct. Correct. Absolutely. So visibility is is key. I mean, so we, as I said, we are bringing deep evidence uh, to the expertise that uh, process owners, uh, business owners already have. They know what to do. They know the levers that they have to pull. But in what manner they have to pull them, when they have to pull them, and whether the levers that they are pulling are making it back into into the processes that they are running on the ground. That is the visibility that we. Uh, that we bring. That's point number one. Point number two is after you pull the levers, let's say you use scan and you pull the levers and you say, okay, all right, scan has told me that there's a bottleneck here. Let's fix this. Mm -hmm. One of the other things that we do is as, as the, as one of our customers, the chief transformation officer likes to say uh, that, Hey, it is sometimes easy to transform, but it is difficult to stay transformed. What she, oh, means, what she, means, you know, we revert to mean, we revert to our old way of working very quickly, something they are comfortable with. So change is sometimes easy to do, but difficult to sustain over a long time, right? So you may, you may, you had an audit and everyone's on their toes and say, oh, we'll correct this process, we'll do this, and a new process being defined. It runs for two days and then people start doing the thing that they were doing before. So how do you continuously make sure that the new processes, the new interventions that you make are actually being performed? And that's when scan comes into play once again, because you can 
continuously observe what's going on. And scan can always tell you, hey, based on the golden process or the standard deviant, uh, st standard variant of work that you had set up, here is the deviation, right. right? That over time, your processes are drifting in such and such manner. So you want course correct. And, and the areas where they're drifting specifically and with the agents where it is drifting. So all of that becomes clearer to the process owner. If you say to a business owner, what if we came in and shine the light on what's actually happening with your business process? Would that be a value to you? Yes. <laughs> you just are looking for the truth. All we are saying to, to customers today is how much, how much of regulatory risk are you exposing the organization to and what right. do you have to pull to control that risk today? Millions of dollars, billions of dollars are at risk. What are you doing to control that at scale, number one? Number two, do you have a fundamental idea as to the transformations on which you're spending millions upon millions of dollars, right? New tooling, new technology, new process, paying consultants, paying system integrators to put this in place. Do you know whether this will actually help? And is this going to the right? Is this money going to the right areas, right? Right. So in that sense, think of us as the Fitbit, as the X-ray, as the MRI scan. That before you do surgery, you don't you don't jump into a surgery uh, without having seen what you need to do surgery on, right? Just because you have uh, scapel and and things and anesthesia to do surgery, you don't jump into surgery. You do an, you do analysis. You you look at the CT scan. You look at the areas where you want to do interventions and so on and so forth. Similarly, scan is that tool that before you make that intervention, it will tell you where to make those interventions in, in, a, in a very, very, very powerful, but a very simple way, which is just to watch the way business is happening. I love this. It, I'm so excited. I think that you are going to be a very, very big deal around the world. And uh, you're just making huge differences with big organizations already. If someone is listening or, or watching and they want to know more information, they want to have just a an analysis. How can they contact you? What do they need to know? All they need to do is uh, log on to www.skan.ai. And the information is there. Our contact page is there. Uh, a lot of the thesis that I just spoke to about this is there on that on, in those blogs and insights there. Um, and they just need to leave their email or phone number. We'll call them right back. Very good. And is there any lasting message or um, information that you feel like we didn't touch on that you'd like to get to? I think we touched on a, uh, the most important aspects is that, hey, uh, you can't transform what you don't know. You can't mm -hmm. monitor what you don't understand. And SCAN gives visibility at the atomic level of your business operations so that then you can monitor the aggregate picture because you have access to this atomic data, which historically was never available. You said a lot in a short interview. Thank you so much, Avi. We appreciate it. And again, it's www.scan.ai, and that's S-K-A-N.ai. Thank you for being with us, Avi. Have a great day. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye.